Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Aleski here, running commentary number 107. And running with Mendel Sappo right over here. Say hi, Mendel. Say hello. That's Mendel. He's our little drummer. Yeah, goodie bye. And so here's a thought. So today, yesterday, the Shabbos, we celebrated Yud Beis Tammuz. It's the aside from being Chana Mishka's birthday, it's the previous Rebbe's birthday, and his release from imprisonment, which is a monumental time in the Jewish calendar. And you can read a lot more about that on Chabad.org than anywhere else. Basically, in a nutshell, he was. He, the previous Rebbe, Rebbe Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson, is the Rebbe of our Rebbe, the father-in-law of our Rebbe, and he pioneered the outreach concept, and the Rebbe took it out and spread it out in a, you know, in a, in a powerful way, and spread it to the world in an unprecedented manner, but he started it, and he also stood up against the Russian authorities in communist Russia in heroic ways. And he was uh, imprisoned and sentenced to death, God forbid, and miraculously it was saved after uh, many miracles. I'm just gonna fix this over here. Okay. So I read one thing I'd like to share with you last night, yesterday, that he explained in a, in a different way that it makes a lot more sense. There's a a phrase in the Talmud. It says, uh, person was, man, man was created alone, singular, one man alone. And another explanation is that every person is different, unique, every person is created uniquely. And Loimar, that a person should say, every person should say, the world was created for me. The world was created for me. Now go ahead and teach that to your children and think about, think about it yourself and uh, see, see where that gets you. And I might venture to say that that's what many people in the world, Americans especially, are raised with. Yes, very self-centeredness. It's all about you. You know, you're the center of the world or I'm the center of the world. And, everything goes around me and it's all about my happiness and me, me, me. We should leave me about Olam. So sounds like it resonates well with a lot of people in this world. But the question is, does it sound like a Jewish value or does it sound too selfish? So the common understanding that the Hasidic masters bring to this, aside from the literal meaning, which is Yes, you should say the world was created for you and do what you got to do, is that it imposes a strong responsibility, a big responsibility on me. If the world was created for me, then I need to do something. I probably need to do more than I'm doing right now to make God happy and justify the world's existence. And that is the basic, basic general Hasidic perspective on that. Yes, say Bishvili Nivra Haolam. The world was created for me and do something about it. That's one idea. But yesterday I read another one. It was beautiful from the previous Rebbe's teachings, Rebbe Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson. And he said as follows. So the word Olam, which is translated as world, is also Helem. It comes from the same root as Helem, which is a known idea that Helem means concealment, the hiddenness. And what is the, the reason why the world is called olam, world in Hebrew? Because it is helem, it conceals the godly energy that creates it and that sustains it constantly. It conceals God, it conceals the truth. So the world, the word world, means concealment. Now, what is this concealment? 
just to touch upon it very, very shortly, is that in the process of creation, this God who's infinite, and he wanted to create a world in which there are beings that don't feel his existence, yet serve him properly. And so what does God do? He goes ahead and creates, uh, well, his light is, if his light will shine full brightness, then nothing could exist, obviously, first of all. But second of all, whatever might exist would feel and sense God's presence in the strongest way. So two things. First of all, it couldn't exist because physical and cannot contain the great light of, of God and, and still exist. Second of all, it would anything that could exist would feel God's presence and that would kind of um, not allow for the purpose of creation which God wanted, which was for beings to not feel his presence, yet still serve him. That's a longer conversation, but for here, this point over here is Bishvili Nivra Olam. What is this concept of Helem, of this concealment, going back to the process of creation? An example given in Chassidus is that if you, an adult, want to teach a concept to a child, you're not going to just tell them the point of the, the concept in the highest form, and that's it. If you want to teach geometry or physics or any other discipline of uh, intellectual discipline, you have to start with a very, very small, small bits and pieces, bits and pieces, and that would be the only way to get the information in. So in order to do that, Einstein, the great scientist, would have to physicist would have to condense his light, obstruct the great light that he has that he wants to share, condense it, minimize it, and in Hebrew that's called simtsum, and then he can share it in little bits and pieces. And that's the only way a great light can come down into vessels that can contain it. So we have a great light from above. We have the, the bestower of the light. We have the recipient below with us, or the student in the analogy. And they, 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 they need to be compatible. The light and the receiver's vessels need to be compatible. Hence the need for this concealment from God's light into this world. Okay, so we have this concept of concealment. So now what is the purpose of the concealment? Now we say, Kishvili Nivra Ha'olam. For me, this concealment was created. This is a different take on those same words. Kishvili Nivra Ha'olam. For me, this concealment was created. Meaning what? Meaning that every step of my life is an opportunity to reveal that which God concealed. It's for me, he concealed it. So God concealed his light in everything in this world, in everything I do, in every experience I have, in every opportunity that I have to do a mitzvah, and in every regular mundane task that I have, whether it's eating or drinking, or doing exercise like I'm doing right now, you have an opportunity, Bishvili Nivrahalem. The concealment was created for me to do what, says the previous Rebbe? To reveal God's light that was hidden by this concealment through our conscious efforts and actions and through our kavana when we do our mundane tasks or when we do the mitzvahs. So, in simple terms, when we do a mitzvah, we're bringing God's, we're revealing some of that which was concealed. When we eat for the sake of heaven, and when somebody eats not just because they're hungry or because it tastes good, but because they want to use the energy for godly purposes, that's kol ma'asecha l'shem shamayim. All your deeds should be done for the sake of heaven. Then you're, you're elevating the food and, 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 the, and the process of eating to a holier level. And an even deeper level is when you're eating the eating itself. The Rebbe says, Behold, in all your ways, 
no god that means not just that the purpose of the food's energy later on will be to serve god but even while you're eating you're serving god because you're thinking about the godly sparks that are hidden inside that food and you want to elevate them and you're resisting the temptation of the food you're not necessarily focusing on how good it tastes you're there you have in that same action of eating you have both surme rava setov moving away from the bad and focusing on the good in which we're focusing on elevating the sparks um, and also resisting the temptation of the, of the, the pleasure that the food brings um, in a, an intense way and we try to do this in every step of our step of our life literally including running including exercise so personally i always think to myself okay i'm doing exercise in order so that i could have strength and the mind space to serve god better to study to, to function to to be happier to be more calm and sane etc but that's one level a deeper level is that the running itself becomes holy now how could that be i'm thinking out loud it might be when you learn torah on the way like we're doing right now so the running itself is holy it's not just a means to an end but it's an end in itself and also maybe if you do a favor for another and take somebody else on a road trip and give the parents the peace of mind or the time that they need to do other things that might be also a way where the running itself the activity itself becomes elevated it's not just a means to another end anyway that's the story for today the previous rebbe's birthday was yesterday may his merit shine upon us all and give us the strength and courage a very very ultra completely courageous man immutable and 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 fought against the harshest times and people and us being here today doing this living torah commentary or running commentary is proof of his success god bless you